Hello and welcome to our homestead. We are starting the install on our Victron equipment into our solar shed slash chicken coop today. We are gonna be mounting everything, running conduit, getting everything set up for the wiring. I'm so excited. Let's get going. DIYers and beginners always get discouraged by Victron equipment because it seems overwhelming and complicated, but I'm gonna show you that it's not. Welcome inside our tiny space here. I've got an air conditioner running because these things need to keep cool and I need to keep the humidity down. We've already got one of our multi plus twos mounted here on the wall. Now it's important to measure everything out and to give it the proper spacing per the manufacturer's instructions. On this wall, I've attached Hardy Backer, which is a non-flammable surface, which you need to mount solar equipment on. And on top of that, I have drawn out where each component is going to go. Now, I highly recommend that because it keeps things organized and it keeps your wire length down as well. Good planning ahead of time just makes things a lot easier. What's really nice about these Victron products is that you can mount them closer together than most. So the spacing on these between the two inverters, the two multi plus inverters is only 10 centimeters. Also where we are going to put the MPPT, which is right down here, we only need 10 centimeters around each side to mount this. So for us, we are gonna have the two multi-plus inverters next to each other here with 10 centimeters between them and then right straight below them, we are going to put our Lynx distributor. To the right of everything, we are going to have our MPPT and our sub-panel here. And then all of our additional communication equipment like our Serbo GX is going to be over here next to the other inverter. And the best way we found to hang these on the wall is with these flip toggles. You flip this up right here, shove it through the hole that you've drilled, push this down and break this off. And then from there, we'll put the long machine screw through and this screw will hold 106 pounds. So I've got two for this one. It's not going anywhere. These are the best anchors that I've found to be able to go into concrete board like this and come out the other side. I wouldn't get anything else. And for any of the other small pieces like the Serbo GX, you don't need anything heavy duty just anchor it to the wall with a screw. We're gonna mount our other Victron inverter. The beautiful thing about these Victron inverters is they have a mounting plate and the inverter just hooks on to the top. So all you need to do is mount this plate to the wall. It's really easy to level it and get it secured where you need it and just hook the inverter over the top. For these toggle bolts, all we're gonna do is shove them through the wall and then pull back on this portion and then it will flip that toggle on the other side of the wall and secure it. And then all you do is break that off, put the screw in. Now we're gonna mount our Lynx distributor. And like I said before, I wanted it mounted centered below both Victron inverters. So it's easy access for the battery cables to come straight down to it. I'm gonna mark these holes off first and then pre-drill them. So I'm not getting dust in the electronics. Then our MPPT is going to go right in this area right here. We're gonna use our flip toggle bolts on that as well because it weighs about 25 pounds. The last thing we are gonna to mount to the wall are our communication devices and our interface. This is the Serbo GX Touch, the Serbo GX, and then the EG4 Life Power Communications Hub. Now this is only needed when you have the regular life power for batteries. If you have the LL version, you don't need this. We're gonna mount them neatly on this space left on the wall next to our other inverter. Now comes a really challenging part and that is running all of your conduit, whether it be the flexible conduit or the hard PVC. 
And you need to think about that ahead of time when mounting your equipment on the wall. It's important to find a breaker box that has a lot of knockouts on it because that's only gonna make it easier for you to run whatever size conduit into it at any position that you need. For our space, since it's limited, I wanted the smallest breaker box that I could find. And this one has room for six breakers. Now, if you find a smaller box like this, you are probably going to need to buy a few extra things. For us, since we're running four gauge wire, we had to buy these terminal blocks that are larger that will accept four gauge wire to come into our neutral bar up here. And we also had to add an additional ground to this panel because it didn't come with one. We're gonna connect all of our AC out conductors through here, through inch and a half conduit, and bring everything in from the inverters with flexible conduit this way. We jump back inside of the barn here for a second because I wanna show you what we are using for a combiner box. Now, are combiner boxes 100% necessary for every system? I would say no. I've been taught no, that they aren't necessary for all systems, but on this one, we are going to put one. And we aren't combining a lot of strings for our PV. We just have two conductors coming in. But I'm going to use this for lightning and surge protection. And that is because our panels are directly over our equipment on the coop. Right now, I'm gonna mount the parts and pieces inside and talk about what they are. And then I'll wire it up later for you. So this is a plastic combiner box that is empty and it doesn't have any holes in it. I just picked this one up off of Amazon. It was the best price that I could find for what I needed and the size I needed it. So I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Additionally, I picked up one of these, which is called a dinkle rail. This is really cool for combining strings together because you can use these small fuse-like bridges to go between your different blocks here where you bring in your PV lines and then that way it can combine them together in there for your breaker, your surge protection device and whatever else you use in here. Then we had to buy these extra DIN rails which we'll just mount on this back plate. Now this back plate they give you is kind of square perforated and it stands off from the back so you can mount them directly to it. And what we found works best are these number six half inches or number six three eighths. And that will grip in the little holes pretty good. Now, if you're not going to use a combiner box because you have a small array, you can use these inline fuses. And these just screw apart and there's a fuse that drops into the center of them and then you put that in line on your PV line. And I do use these on my other array. Now, obviously there are no holes on this combiner box in general, and some don't have it. So you're going to need some way to get some holes in here that are the proper size for your wires. You can use a step drill, which is really probably the best way. If you don't have that, you have easier access to Forstner bits, those will work. If you have a very large drill bit that will fit the size of your cable gland that you need for strain relief and to hold the cable in the bottom, you can use that. Or if you have a small hole saw, that will work as well. But we're gonna need enough holes for our cable glands, for our wires coming in, and then going back out again. And you're gonna need something big enough like the hole saw so that you can run some conduit out and then into where your other equipment is. So I'm gonna place our dinkle rail here at the bottom just using these small screws that I talked about. And then I'll have my breaker and my surge protection up here. Make sure you get a box that's big enough. Even if you don't think you need a box this big, it's way easier to work inside of it. And this one I believe is a nine by 13. And almost all of these DC devices, breakers and surge protection devices come to be mounted on this type of rail, which is called a DIN rail. They just basically snap on. Something I'm finding a little challenging with the Victron equipment is the size of the holes for the wires at the bottom of the inverters. And let me explain, these MultiPlus 2s can accept up to four gauge wire. And I have a long run that I'm running that wire, so I chose the four so that I didn't have a lot of loss in the lines. However, code states that you need to contain a lot of the wiring within conduit, including the PV wires. So I wanted to try to adhere to that as closely as I possibly can. 
But the conduit that's appropriate for four gauge wire won't fit on the bottom of the inverters. We have several holes here in the bottom of the multi-plus that will accept our conductors and our communication wires. And then Victron comes with these little grommets here that you can actually cut off with a sharp razor blade and that will prevent uh, abrasion. It's essentially a bushing slash grommet. So as you can see, I've got a half inch EMT coupling here and that does fit in the hole but it's got a lot of play in it. This is an offset nipple or offset coupling for EMT. And as you can see, it does not fit in the hole. We've got a half inch liquid tight flexible conduit coupling that will fit, no problem. But the three quarter will not fit. You can see I've also got this wire trough here that I could use with either the EMT or the flexible conduit but it would have to be the flexible conduit because the pre-punched knockouts on these don't align with anything for our Victron inverters. But here's the challenge, friends. For four gauge wire, you can only run one conductor through half inch conduit, whether it's EMT or the flexible. And if I was to run AC into these, which I'm not going to be, I would not have enough holes in the bottom of the inverter for all the conductors. And honestly, what I think I'm going to do is just run the flexible conduit from each one of the holes that's appropriate and back to our sub panel. Now here's another challenge with the Victron system is that the MPPTs do not have anywhere on the MPPT itself to connect conduit. So maybe it's just running conduit through most of the building until you get to this point and then right here, cutting it off the conduit and just running the wires out the end into the MPPT. And that's what I've seen done in a few cases. However, most Victron installations that you do see, especially in vans, and that's a little bit different application with grounding and everything, but most of those, all of the wires in the Victron system are exposed. Now, a lot of people will run six gauge sheath cable out of these Victron inverters. And that's fine, that doesn't go on conduit because it's a sheath. But then I don't think they make four gauge sheath cable to do that. I have four gauge THHN. Somebody had recommended to me to get a giant enclosure for one of these, a cabinet enclosure, and put the MPPT inside of it. I have never seen that done. I don't think Victron uh, recommends that. I appreciate the suggestion, but I don't think that's right. This has a really big heat sink on the back of it and these need a lot of ventilation to cool off. They do make a piece that goes on the bottom of these, but that just protects the wires. It doesn't accommodate any conduit. Now let's measure out all this conduit, dry fit it, and get it ready for the wiring. Since parts for inch and a half conduit are so expensive and they are quite large, so you need a large space to be able to turn them, what I did was I took a blowtorch and I heated up this inch and a half piece of conduit and just made a slight bend in it. It's about a six inch deviation so that I can be able to connect my sub panel with the incoming conduit running from the barn way easier. So like I mentioned, we are running the PV wires through conduit on the exterior of the building. Then we're just dry fitting everything just to make sure. Now, even though we do have the combiner box outside, we still need a PV disconnect, and that is gonna go right here below our MPPT. And for this particular IMO DC isolator switch and this MPPT, we do not need MC4 connectors. So they just connect bare wire inside all of them. We also have these heavy duty Pike Industries bus bars. These things I love. These are incredibly beefy. The bar on it, the copper bar is incredibly thick and I will link them in the description below. I have them on my other system. Our batteries are gonna go down here on the floor. The conductors are gonna connect to the bus bars and then over to the Lynx distributor. And then from the Lynx up to the inverters, we also need a breaker. We have these 125 amp Nader breakers and we need to find an enclosure for these. All of our conduit is run and all of our equipment is mounted in the positions which the instructions call for and that we think is the best position for us. For management of these pieces of conduit, we are gonna add host straps to keep them in place where we want them. 
And then for everything else, once we're confident that that's the position that we want it in, we're gonna glue everything together. I know I'm going to get some questions about not putting the wire trough up, but for our situation, I thought it was best that we run the conduit like this. If you were interested, all of this equipment is sold by Signature Solar, and I placed all the individual links in the description below the video. Don't forget to stick around for the next video in this series, in which we will be wiring everything together, so you don't want to miss that. I know Victron systems can look like a big challenge, but besides a few little quirks to them, they are super easy to put together. But as always, if you are unsure about what to do, hire an electrician or a professional solar installer to do it. All we're doing here is demonstrating what we are doing. If you have any questions, please leave them for us in the comment section below the video. Now go check out these videos right here, which showcase three different solar panel mounting systems that we've done here on our homestead. One might fit you. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.